belief that NASA wasn't doing more to get people to Mars, and the fact that Earth might eventually become an uninhabitable wasteland, Elon Musk founded SpaceX, the rocket company making raves today. In case you don't notice, Mars is one of the closest habitable planets to Earth. Although it is some 140 million miles away, it still endures a decent sunlight and cold, which humans can warm up by the way. Easily by compressing the Mars atmosphere, humans can grow plants and mind you, the atmosphere is primarily CO2 coupled with some nitrogen and argon, and others. While the date is separated with the 24 hour limit on Earth, Mars is about 24 hours and 37 minutes. And as a matter of fact, the gravity is about 38% of what it is on Earth. Facts have proven that humans can easily adapt and survive on Mars. But Elon Musk mentioned in an interview that the first humans there would in fact die, but only after they have successfully satisfied their Mars exploration and lived out their life. Apart from the fact that the journey to Mars will take around 6 months, it will take an amount of around 1000 spaceships and a million tons of vitamin C to make life on Mars verifiable. Elon Musk believes that life on Mars can only be achievable if there is a self-sustaining city there. One thing that has been a major obstacle to the Mars occupation is the ships and their need to resupply. For the time being, the issue of ships coming down to Earth from Mars after landing there is one that has been on the tables for long. Even with NASA confirming that their supplies for the planet will not be for tourist travels, but for the continuation of life there. Overtly, the sustainability of life on Mars depends on how much is needed for colonization. Judging from the fact that the planet is slightly different from our Earth, those that find themselves on Mars might experience a little bit of difficulty, especially without enough supplies to last them for their intended time there. Interestingly, SpaceX hopes to send up a starship on the back of the super heavy booster, which Musk commonly refers to as the Big Effin Rocket, or BFR. Carrying nearly 13 tons into space, SpaceX claims ownership to the most powerful rocket booster in the world, the Falcon Heavy. Hence the need for the BFR, which will be able to carry about a few hundred tons to space, before the eventual 1000 tons. As a matter of fact, the BFR is planned to be 25 stories high, with about 42 powerful Raptor engines, which can lift an entire Boeing 747. In his plans to colonize the Red Planet, Elon Musk outlined that the BFR will push Starship into space and that it will connect to a similar booster, already put in place to provide support throughout the journey to Mars. The Starship transportation system to Mars is to endure each launch of SpaceX's reusable Starship rockets, about three times per day on average, while carrying a 100 ton payload on each flight. With more of about 1000 flights per year, carrying more than about 100 tons of cargo on each flight. A total of 100,000 tons of cargo will be in orbit, ready for delivery on Mars. 1,000 starships could send around 100,000 people every 26 months from Earth to Mars, because at that time, the orbits are best aligned for interplanetary travel. As a matter of interest, Earth and Mars align, get close to each other, only once in a space of two years which creates the window for quick passage. While most of the fuel will be consumed by each ship flying into orbit around Earth, several other tanker spaceships could launch and refill the carriers with more fuel to reach the destination Mars. As the SpaceX employees are working hard to build the Starship system, the landing on Mars could be later in 2022 or 2023. Clearly, Elon Musk stated that the human invasion of Mars will not happen anytime soon. However, he mentioned that compared to Earth, there will be lots of jobs, including direct democracy where inhabitants will make decisions for themselves with fewer and much more lesser complicated laws compared to Earth. As regards to food, it will be grown on solar powered hydroponic farms located underground or in an enclosed structure. As regards to the landing zone of the starship, studies have revealed that it will be near subsurface water and ice deposits. This position is said to be located strategically to receive enough sunlight for the array of solar panels to power the colony. The refueling of the spaceships will only be done easily enough with the resources found on the planet. The SpaceX ships use liquid methane and liquid oxygen as fuel, and it can easily be recreated on Mars using the Sabatia process. In case you don't know, this type of fuel makes it easy to reuse rocket boosters for an amount of time, because it burns cleanly. The process makes use of nickel as the agent, to synthesize methane from atmospheric carbon dioxide 
and it can easily be extracted from the water ice located on Mars. To generate a useful amount of fuel on Mars, it will roughly take 26 months, and by the calculation of SpaceX engineers, the necessary power to make the Sabatier work will need about 56,600 square meters of ground based on solar panels which can be simply moved to Mars in a single starship. At this point, I'm not sure if you're aware of Elon Musk's boring company on Earth hoping to tackle the issue of transportation. We believe that the boring company will not be left out of this colonization, as it will first need to dig the Mars surface to access the subsurface water. Furthermore, to safely keep the human colonies from the harsh ionizing radiation, initial settlements might need to be organized in deep subsurface artificial encampments. How do you think connection with the colonists on Mars will be maintained? Let us know your answers in the comments section. With the Starlink satellite supposedly opening communication paths between both planets, it shouldn't come as a surprise to know that Elon Musk might also make use of autonomous vehicles, either cars or trucks, to carry out distant and difficult missions for the colonists. Although it has not been explicitly expressed, the vehicles might even be used to move products for refueling on the surface of Mars. For a fact, we do know that Musk really wants the first starships to be filled with machines and cargo necessary for proximate future missions. These equipments are such that are needed for humans to build enough sustainable facilities to generate power, tweak the Martian air, gather water, and transform the raw resources into oxygen and methane fuel for safe return launches to Earth. The first two uncrewed starships will confirm the water resources on the planet and locations that pique interests. They will also determine the possible effects of future hazards, what the hazards might be, and set up necessary infrastructure for further explorations, including perhaps a launching pad for subsequent crewed spaceships. Let us assume the first reconnaissance launches are successful. SpaceX could go ahead to send manned starships to Mars. The first starships, however, will serve as residences for astronauts for further evaluations, and it might even reduce the complexity of the mission by removing the need to immediately build habitats on the planet. Elon Musk also touted that a Mars base could be completed by 2028, and a lot of life support experts have expressed their doubts basically for the fact that they do not believe that the necessary technologies for life will be ready, not to even mention a permanent city for colonization. But we all know Elon Musk, and he has a flair for achieving the slightly unthinkable. And for the Red Planet, he aims to make a backup for humans after life on Earth becomes unbearable. To transform Mars into a similar world as Earth, Elon Musk once talked about nuking Mars. However, the images on SpaceX's website of a rusty red planet morphing into an Earth-like world suggest a hypothetical process of terraforming. While this type of climate change is deliberate, it suggests that Mars could be morphed into a wet and warm world, far better suited for ceaseless human colonization, only if the carbon dioxide-rich ice caps on Mars are easily melted. NASA, however, does not believe in the possibility of lasting terraforming, as there may not be enough trapped gases to sustain a comfortable planetary atmosphere. Compared to Earth, Mars has less than 1% of atmospheric density, which makes it synonymous to a vacuum cleaner. Currently, SpaceX is building its first set of Starship orbital vehicles, and are conducting tests in a South Texas facility, very much close to Earth's core. From this facility in Boca Chica, Texas, it launched many test flights of Starship prototypes and is preparing for many more tests to come in the near future. The colonization of Mars will most likely take years, but it will surely be worth the wait in the end. Thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen and check out the juicy details coached in them. See you there! Uh, for, for human spaceflight. So, um...
Let's make this real. Any questions? <laughs> Let's make this real. Yeah. Cool.